Hey everybody, welcome back to Kali Conversation welcome, with me, Rick. Welcome, welcome, and me, Nain. And our special guest, Johnny Oliva. Johnny What's Oliva, up, buddy? O- Oliva Salone. Oliva, Oliva Salone, as they would say in school. As they would say in school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's funny. I'm um, bullied because of Oliva. So No, I was bullied because I couldn't speak English properly. No, really? Yeah, so I was born bullied? in Casablanca, Morocco. Right. Okay. So we spoke French and Spanish at home, mm-hmm. mostly French. Went from Casablanca to Madrid, went to school in Madrid, went to the running of the Bulls in Papaloma. But I was on the balcony watching everybody <laughs> else get bored. Oh, so you didn't, you didn't have to Yeah, work. and then my dad took me to the bullfights. But yeah, and then we immigrated here in the States. Uh, you know, I went to kindergarten, but, you know, then did the French and the English, you know. It's right. a kind of funny language, but it's okay. I got it down now. <laughs> so did you have that accent when you were little? No, I did not, but uh, I do now. And it's very <laughs> I know, which is really weird, right? <laughs> Because you sound, <laughs> learned it over, yeah. sound I learned natural. it overnight. I learned it. I had to learn it. <laughs> People were telling me you're supposed to be French. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, thanks for coming down. No, well, thank you, thank you for having us. You the know, second round, by the way. This is round two because the first time, the mic did not work. Two hours. Issues. Wasted. Gone. He's not he supposed to. Wasted. They're so professional. <laughs> Call them. <laughs> He's not supposed to say that. <laughs> Too late. But we're not editing it now, so yeah. So now, now it's you know. there. Now you know. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for that, sir. Woo. <laughs> Look, he's blushing. He's blushing. He's blushing. I know. He is. I, I love, love it. it. My hand on you his know, back or what? He's, he's the be. only guy that could actually get away with doing that. Thank you. For it. Thank you, and I love you. Th- this guy's awesome. You know, we like he said we were here last time mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, a week mm-hmm. ago or so, and um, we did have technical difficulties with our mic. We got about the first eleven minutes. And it cut out. Yep. We don't know why. Um, but here Ugh. we are again. Hey, it might meant to be, you know. Read it. You know, and, and out of his generosity, we are here again today. Yes, truly. You know, we had, um, you know, we, we didn't expect that to happen, obviously. No, no of no, course no. not. But plans for to it. show how generous <laughs> this man is, he allowed us to come back without a problem. And, and mm. you know, anybody else might not have been the same. Really? No, I don't think so. I think everybody that you've talked to would be... Gracious enough to get you. No, you guys, are, so. you guys are too lovable, man. You <laughs> Fucking hell. You guys would be able to come in and talk. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Because yeah, I ain't doing it for you. <laughs> so let me ask you this. And, you know, let, let's <laughs> pretend we, we weren't here before. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does that well, mean I get drinks and flowers again? That, that's right. Ooh, yeah. uh, so when, how old were you when you started this when, in the martial arts world? Honestly, you know, uh, anywhere between the age of, of 12 to 15, because, you know, after we did the first one, I kept thinking about it. But like, <laughs> but like I said on the, on the first thing, um, I was a mimicker, so everything I saw, I mimicked. So when I first <laughs> started with the Lazadas over in Daly City by, 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 uh, uh, by the shopping center over uh-huh. there. Um, St. Francis Square. Yeah, St. Francis Square. Up on, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's where the Lazada... I used to live three blocks from there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I was on uh, Del Parada Drive. Oh, okay. Which is like a few blocks. From, but, you know, yeah. when I got into Lazada's, you know, and C. Joe came up and my sister brought me in, and have you trained before? As uh, every instructor goes, you know, so he goes, you know, pros. I said, no, but I can, I can do this and I can do that. And Paul came up with his sword and I did the same thing. I was, if I saw it, I mimicked it. Almost like exactly what you do, sir. Mm-hmm. And I've seen you. I hand you my knife and my cane. And if you see it, you, you're... You're able to mimic it. Start breaking it down. Right. And that's that's all I ever did, but it was quick in my head. Really Oh, yeah. It's just natural. I had to learn how to do mine. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been born in Morocco. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> I was You're born in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you this. The Lasada brothers. Yes. And they're, because I grew up during the era of um, late 70s, early 80s martial arts. Mm-hmm. And back then, it would have been the Karate Kid and all this, but... Growing up in San Francisco, yeah, every martial artist knew about the Lasada brothers. Oh my God! They were police officers in San Francisco PD. Mm-hmm. Um, they were almost legendary because everybody knew of them. Everyone had There's, a story about them. Yeah, everybody that I come across, oh yeah, Ray and blah blah, you know. So you hear that? Give me your take on those two. When I first met them, I mean, literally, I grew up with them when we were this big. Right. And oh, wow. oh yeah, it, it was phenomenal. Well, they were not very big. They were Filipinos. Well. <laughs> Big and saturated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that was it. I mean, you know, and, and back in the day, I, I graduated in 79. So I, I was in, this, you know, right. in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And we used to, you know, pop and lock and do all the kind. That was one of Paul and Ray's favorite things, to just sit there and just play around. Wait, you danced too? Oh, my God, yes. Really? Oh, hell yeah. 
So, so you went to the used to have brothers to well. pop and lock. So <laughs> we, yeah, we're sitting there. We're go- and then, you know, they're doing it. So I'm like right there and they're looking over and going, white boy can move. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, we used to drop and do this. And that's how I hooked. Me and Paul and Ray were just the best of friends. And everything, I mean, like I told you last time, I've trained under different styles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shotokan, Taekwondo, combat karate, this and that, and, and Kempo karate. But I always go back and say, that's who I learned it from, the right. Lazadas. No matter what, that was my, my, my basis, my root. Right. That was, you know, that's, and then the tree just came off of that. So no matter what I learned, it always came reverted back. back to, yeah. Exactly. It always came back to, yeah. what did CJ always say? What did CJ always tell you to do? What did I? But after, after the school broke, broke up, I ended up, you know, going to CJ's house off of Woodside. Uh, and that was funny. We hung, we hung, there's stories that Ray Lazada started mouthing off with CJ when CJ grabbed him. We tied a rope to the bottom of his foot and hung him upside down. And he had, <laughs> and he had to do so many sit ups. Oh, there's lots of stories like that. Wait, wow. they actually trained like that? Oh, uh, yeah, we, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard the like, stories. Like, go outside, dig a hole about yay deep, tie your feet together, jump in, jump out 100 times, and if you fall, you start all over again. How do you think the Paul, Paul and Ray got those heights when they're kicking? Yeah. Yeah. Paul used to just spin and jump up. So there's Ray, Ray was just phenomenal <laughs> in kicks. I didn't get to ask you, you last time because no. you, you described the strength of their kick. Oh, the strength. Oh, okay. So the strength of Ray Lazada's kick. So there's a 190-pound bag rover on Silver <laughs> Avenue uh-huh. training. Right. And he's teaching a spinning hook kick. So he spins and he hooks kicks the first time. Of course, the bag just goes boom. And you're, you're like, oh, wow. But then to demonstrate it, he breaks it down. He sets, he spins, holds his foot up in a splits position up on top, looking back at us and saying, you just got to fold your knee and turn your hip. And when he did that, he not only hit the bag and moved it, the thing freaking bent <laughs> from, from point A to point B. Yeah. The power, I, I played with Ray and I've hit Ray from Mississippi. <laughs> right. You know, did it, boom. And I hit him and he'll look at me, turn around and go, Nice, Johnny. My turn. <laughs> Ray, when he boxed you, yeah. good luck. Good luck. But if if I played what Paul taught me, the hungar and everything else, then I was able to manipulate right. his hands and snap them. Hungar is, sounds like uh, what we do in the Filipino martial arts as uh, hubad lubad, where, where you're doing the hand stuff going yeah. back and forth, right? Lo- or yeah, a lot, lot of animal side. forms. Right. Lapsa, lo- chisa, that's, right. that's all sticky hands from the, from the Wing Chun system. Right. We never did sticky hands. We did sticky hands because we used to train in Wing Chun and, and CJ used to bring us over to Chris Chang in San Francisco right. or Paul would go and come back and, and teach us what he learned. Right. So what we did <clears throat> is, is put your right hand out. We used to start here. Right. So the second I move, he's got to move. So if right. I move, he's got to counter and then boom. And that's bridging is more realistic than sitting there trying to chase right. out for us. So Paul was always playing hands and like I said, when yeah, I mean, like I said, and, and that's that's very similar to um, Hubad Lubad, yeah, which is Perry Place Trap for us uh, on how we do it. Oh well, I'll play about it. Yeah, so it, it's it's really cool to to hear about that back then. Well, yeah, because they're they're cross training, right? And, and to hear about it now, which is something that you know all martial all most Filipino martial arts have that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, their own version of it and whatever else, and. I love hearing these stories of back in the day because, you know, these guys were the innovators. These are the guys who brought out something different than everybody. Let's make that tradition. The way they used to kick. It's like what the extremists do now. Yeah. And Ray and Paul used to do it back in the day all the time. But, you know, but but the cool thing about it, like you're saying now, because it became something they look back to and say, wait, why aren't we doing that? Hmm. You know, these guys who keep preaching about traditions and traditions and whatever else, they seem to forget those actual traditional stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm the saying. Growing, Their tradition evolving, now is totally in, a different yeah. tradition than what the actual tradition was. We keep a lot of tradition, st- traditional stuff here. Uh, uh, the stances, the bow stances, the horse stances, right. the fighting stances, we, and, and then the, the torquing of the hips and the palm. Right. But then we, we, then you have to take all that tradition and make it more of an upright because you're not going to stand in the low stance of the street. Good. It, it's so funny too because we saw that little boy out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who They actually had a little kid training out there for his belt. Mm-hmm. And the stuff that he had him doing is like, I remember doing that stuff. Oh, yeah. Back in the seven, you know, back in the 70s oh, yeah. when I was in class. And, and, and I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hated the, low, the horse stance. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't even do a split these days, you know, oh, just because I'm just, I'm just so bad at it. 
Uh, because in, our, in, in what Danny created, we don't do much kicking. Not, there's no kicks above the waist. Yeah, it's all from the waist down. Yeah. yeah so you want to kick him in the head, knock him on his knees. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Right? So when I it saw sense. that, it brought back memories. And, and it brought back like, oh, mm. you know, I cringe like, oh, I, I, I remember those things. But that's just it. I have a lot of friends that are martial art and have schools. And they keep going, well, why are you such in good shape? Why, do you, why, are, you, why are you progressing? It's because you're not training with your own kids. Right. So if I'm doing the basics constantly, constantly, class constantly. After class yeah. after class after it, class. It, it's it's going to get more fluid. It's going to get <laughs> you faster know, and, and cleaner. And you bring a, a, a great thing because I would always tell Naeem, you have to teach. Because that's exactly what that does. Yep. You know, me teaching, and when we play, I'm constantly showing them stuff. And I will go back to basics. Mm. I say, here, let's go back to this idea from the very beginning, from seven years ago when you first got here. What does he's it look like, like really? Now? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, really? We got to go back that far? He goes, yeah, let's go. And but with the new knowledge he's gained in the seven years, he goes, wow, this is totally different yeah, than what it I is. remember. But you, you got to re- like with me, and same as with with Rick. Mm-hmm. You, you got to remember that we can teach, but then we make you teach, not not to make you feel bad, but mm-hmm. to see your skills. Because if you can teach it, then you'll catch all the mistakes constantly and you're just going to yes. get better and better because it's like okay it's check the block block not just block mm-hmm. you know and that's just it yeah and, and i've always i'm a big proponent of for you to get better you got to teach absolutely you got to sh- you got to showcase yourself yeah, it's part of the process yeah. you got to showcase yourself you got to make you got to make the form fit you that's just the difference between traditional and my hybrid system mm-hmm. right. traditional you have to move a certain way yeah. like oh. everybody else yeah. uh, but then some kids the way they move are a little bit more creative in their right. head movement so i let that go i'm not going to go no it has to be this way say uh, for instance our praying mantis form mm-hmm. uh mantis fist it's a right so your mantis fist will be different it's the same circular moves right but you might not pop and recoil like a, you might just go well you know and then that's it it's an expression, a form is an expression right. of you, like a dance would be. And, and you know, we always tell our <laughs> students. Going back to pop and lock. Pop and lock. But you know, we, we tell our students that very thing in that you can only move the way your body will allow you to. Right. Yeah. If you try to move the way I'm telling you to move, it ain't going to happen. Yep. And, and that's, you know, I, I love that you're saying these things because it really, you know, I didn't know whether anybody else did this. Cause I, yeah, I've me, gone, me neither. No, so you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, absolutely. We right? I, mean, too many. I always thought that everybody, the traditionalists, say, no, you can't. You have to move like this. And a lot of times, what happens? They lose students. Yeah, I got. They I, I, move got that way. I got adults and kids that can't roll. They just, for the life of them, can't do a forward roll. No matter how much I teach them on the ball or whatever, or they're too old. If an instructor can't modify his forms to fit that student, then I, I, I believe that that instructor needs to go back and learn. Thank you because, so much. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, we have a technique where you have to do a forward roll, and, we, and when you come out of it, you turn and punch. So I just tell my guy, slide forward, kneel, quickly kneel down, block punch, then slide turn. You don't have to roll. You right. got bad shoulders. You got a bad back. Okay. Everything should be able to modify your forms or your techniques to fit whatever you want. And when you can't do that, then you, that's not a good school. <laughs> Oh, Honestly, I hate to I hate to say that I, mean? I hate to agree with you, but yeah. yeah, it's not a good school to go to yeah. because the instructor and if the if you ask the instructor, okay, so you're doing this move in praying mantis, what's it for? Well, you're kind of hooking this, or you're kind of doing. The, are you kidding me? Demonstrate Kinda? that to me. Yeah, show me. So in in my system, when I teach you a form, especially the high level form. I expect to be in front of you, and I expect you to do the technique on me properly. Same as the combination, same as the scream the daggers. It's almost, I'm you. I'm being the uke, mm-hmm. uh, as we did on, on Saturday. Right. But you train, you train like, I, like I said last time, on a stagnated position where the person's just punching, and you're doing your technique, and then he's jabbing a little faster, and then it's one, two, and then we go off the bridge, and everything you learn, you try to do off the bridge. Right. It's, it's modifying everything. Right, you have to work it on the fly. Yeah, you Absolutely. know, a lot of schools, like I've said, or like you, you even now, you know, saying that, yeah, they don't do that. I mean, Mm-mm. and it's just a surprise. No, I was always shocked by that when when I would tell my students, "Oh no, you make make the adjustments to you," and they're like, "Really?" You know, we had a student who came from another school, and he thought it was disrespectful 
that he couldn't do it the way we wanted him. And I said, no, no, do it the way you want. He goes, are you sure? He goes, yeah, no, we're telling you. He yeah, goes, we're telling you to do it. That's disrespectful. He goes, no, no I'm no, telling I'm, you. <laughs> it's I'm the guy, and I'm saying yeah. do it. <laughs> I know. It's funny how they don't understand that. Yeah. And, and, and after all the years that you teach and all the rankings that I have and mm-hmm. you have yeah. and your background, when you look at a student and you go, you know what? That was just, that was absolutely great. You did it perfectly. And they still doubt you. Yeah. I'm yeah. going, why are you doubting me? Then why are you here? <laughs> You're not doubting me. Yeah. You're actually doubting, You're doubting yourself. yourself. Yeah. So what am I doing to not help you See build that? that? Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit the other way. When I tell Nayeen, I say, that thing you just did it sucked. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, I'm, it's I'm, never good enough. Well, you know, and it's not that it's never good enough. It's that I've always thought that if you're not honest to your students, then you're killing them. No, I'm brutally honest. I'm like, you have to be, right? Uh, You have to be. Because I say, oh, yeah, that thing you just said sucks. What what, what were you thinking? Wrong is wrong and right is right. Yeah. And if you're going to do it wrong, you're going to keep doing it till you do it right. If you do it right, you do it one time and we move on. But it also then forces a student to get better, doesn't it? Yes, it it does. It really does. It creates that thing in their mind that says, oh, Seiju says, this is the proper, yeah. and I yeah, gotta, you, have you know, it. Yeah. and then, and then once they get that, then they can play and do whatever they want with yeah, it. Yeah, right? then you After can that, modify it once you learn it. If you want to, if you want to block this way or do it this way, fine. You're still doing the move in the right direction. You're still avoiding the jab. So what's wrong? Did you get hit? No. Did you hit him back first? Yeah. Good for you. You won. It yeah. worked. That's a win. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's amazing, like you said, the students have so much self doubt. Because they think, one, they think they're letting you down as mm-hmm. the instructor. Well, yeah, they, they, they really, they sometimes, uh, sometimes they put you on too high of a pedestal because yeah. everything is disrespectful. I'm going, no, it's, it, guys, I, I'm a CJO. yeah, I'm a CJO in here because I founded my system. Yeah, right. I have a 10th degree black belt on me, great. But you know what, I'm just John, I'm just John or Johnny. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, you're gonna call me CJ when you're next to me. Outside, I don't care what you call me. Me, me, and Danny only want the pedestal because we're short. Well, yeah, <laughs> they I've noticed reach. that. Yeah, they are. By the way, I'm sunken into my mat right now. I'm about this deep so that we even out. <laughs> yeah, so great she is. Look, but uh, <laughs> going back to the idea of the traditional, that that's that's a lot that comes from the traditional way of teaching is. I'm the master. I can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. So when people hear that title or see that the belt, they're like, oh, "Okay, that's what plays in the back of their head, whether they acknowledge it outright or not." Correct. It plays a big part in how you listen to them. We had a full discussion on one of our colleague conversations about the idea of: Do we listen to the instructor, or do we listen to the instructions? Oh, that's well said. That's well said. And then we had a whole conversation that's, that's in reference well to that. Yeah. Wow. No, feel free to use I know it. No. <laughs> hey, I know it came from him. <laughs> and you just stole it. So that's why I just turned my body. That was fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> but you are right. Oh, yeah. Hey. Thief. Oh, my God. But I give no, credit. But if you think about that, yeah. that, that really that's, becomes a very important is, thing, I've, doesn't you know, it? I've never thought of it in those terms. Thank you for pointing that out. Oh, of course. This no, is that, what it's about. That's, that's great. Yeah, that's just how we see things. Yeah, do you, yeah, I like that. You know, and, and it was funny because that particular episode was capping on Danny. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my God. Oh, God. We uh, didn't do that subtly. It was all inside jokes, so only Danny was offended. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Danny, they brought it up. We love you. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but, you know, because sometimes your instructor gets too caught up in his world yeah. mm-hmm. and starts rattling off all these things and... and talk to maybe a little too long about hoping that you're gonna it's gonna stick when maybe the first time around it already stuck yeah it already yeah and, and all you need to do is put it into play and see if it actually did or not mm-hmm. if it didn't then you go back and talk yeah. some more but you gotta see you, you gotta, gotta guide him with a gentle hand yeah let, right. let's see did it did it stick let's, okay go do it oh it did yeah. Okay, or let's go on. No, the it didn't. Yeah. Man, what I gotta do now. Yeah, now I gotta hear you talk for another hour. <laughs> yeah. But that and and that becomes a real critical thing, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It because really does. To that student, but do you, I don't let know me what you're let me ask anymore. let me ask you something. When you're teaching, whether it's Nain or somebody else, do you when you're teaching your basics, 
Do you go back and think how you learned that basic at the same time almost? Always. Yeah, isn't that funny? Always. Yeah. And, and I think that's what makes us better. And I think that's what makes you, yeah, that was, that's, that's correct. And that's what makes you a better instructor because yeah. you remember your struggles. Right. What did it take to and, learn and, and that's why, you know, for us, we have our students, the moment they learn something and they do it good, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but they do it good, they understand what's behind it. Mm -hmm. We force them to teach it to somebody else. Yeah, same here. We don't, yeah, well, I don't. I don't do like Naeem does, stick a knife in his back and go teach, but yeah, I just, you know, can you show, can, yeah. yeah, all my high ranks, all my high ranks have got to teach my low ranks, yeah. so if you're a purple, blue, but no, whatever, we're, yeah, we're, we're saying we're having the low ranks teach it. Oh, wow, that's Guys cool. who've only been in for like two or three months, as long as they do that Well, you got better students than me, because two or three months, they're the, oh. Well, that's why this, <laughs> well, and that's why Naeem has gotten to where he's at, because. <laughs> yeah, he puts me, he's like, hey, show them this. I'm like, oh. Yeah, okay. you know, and, yeah. I'll say, and I'll say, I want you to teach me something. And whatever he's teaching me, obviously I already know, but the, the further instruction that is that I want you to teach me something the way you see it, mm. not the way I told you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I always 